In today's video, we are going to be comparing the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7i Pro to the MacBook Pro for 2021. This video is a bit overdue because I went to a Vipassana course and then after that I've been super busy working with my regular office job and moving to a different house here in Gothenburg. So I am now all settled in this house and can finally get back to making some more videos. These laptops have some very interesting similarities. They are both 14 inch devices with very good 16 by 10 aspect ratio screens. They also have great color reproduction and nice bright screens. Both of them has got very high quality feel. They have a similar or somewhat similar weight. USB-C charging, great speakers, great keyboards and trackpads, and altogether very well working devices. That's why I think it is so interesting to make a comparison between the two, even though I'm well aware that the MacBook Pro in this specification is around 2400 euros, when the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7i Pro in this specification is around 1200 euros. So we have pretty much a double price on the MacBook Pro. Because the Yoga Slim 7 Pro is available with the Ryzen 9 5900HX CPU, which is currently the most powerful AMD CPU, I also feel like this is a valid comparison in terms of powerful ultrabooks that are available in the 14 inch form factor. The specifications I have here is the base model of the M1 MacBook Pro. So that means that it is the M1 Pro together with 16 gigs RAM and 512 gigabyte SSD. The specification I have, the Yoga Slim 7i Pro, is the i5, so this is the Intel version, the 1135G7, together with 16 gigs RAM and 512 gigabyte SSD. This guy comes with a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, 120 hertz variable screen, and this comes with a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, 90 hertz screen, without the variable feature. So as you can see, they share a very similar specification, although we already know from the beginning that the M1 Pro is a huge lot more powerful of a CPU compared to the 1135G7 that is in the Intel version. Let's talk right away about my different use cases that I have for these laptops. And I've been spending a fair bit of time with both of them. The Yoga Slim 7 Pro has been my main unit for a good six months now. It's probably even more than six months when the MacBook Pro came in about a month ago and has become my main laptop driver for this past month. Both because I've been testing it, but also because it is a genuinely good experience in many of my different use cases. I use these laptops for office work with being in my office. I use them for office work when I'm on the go. I use them a little bit for video editing for this channel and that could be done both in the office, at home, or on the go when I'm traveling. If I can, I also do a tiny bit of gaming, but that is really not one of my most important use cases. For my office work in the office, for me, this is a clear win for the Yoga Slim 7i Pro. Mainly this is because I've been testing a lot around the multiple monitor setup that I'm using, where I want to use a single cable to connect to two monitors and other peripherals. And I've gotten really used to that experience of just sitting down at my desk, plugging in one cable and then having everything working. This works like a charm with the Yoga Slim 7 Pro, but this does not work very well with the MacBook Pro. And the reason for that is that Mac OS does not support daisy chaining. Of course, macOS supports multiple monitors, and that's something that Apple have been raving about, both with the old Intel MacBook Pros that could support four 4K monitors, and then with these new guys that can support uh, three external monitors on the M1 Pro, and then four external monitors on the M1 Max. So they really are able to drive a lot of external monitor power. However, they're not able to do so with one cable. And that's just the way that it is. I actually bought a docking station to be able to use Thunderbolt to then plug into two different monitors. But I realized when doing that solution that it doesn't matter because it's still using the same kind of technology. So what you need to do if you want to do a one cable setup on macOS is that you need a Thunderbolt docking station 
and then you need one monitor that runs off of Thunderbolt technology and not on DisplayPort technology. When you get that, then you can connect another monitor that run off of some kind of DisplayPort technology. So that could be a DisplayPort monitor, it could be USB-C, or it could be an HDMI monitor. But the key here is that you need that Thunderbolt monitor, and they are pretty hard to get by, and also they are really expensive. And I feel like when you buy such an expensive unit like this one, the first thing you want to do is not go out and splurge an extra 300 euros on a docking station and then an extra 6, 7, 8 or 900 euros on a Thunderbolt monitor as well if you don't have one. So that's really something to keep in mind if you, like me, are very into one cable setups. If you're able to run Windows on a Mac computer, you can still use daisy chaining, but you cannot use Bootcamp to boot up to Windows in this machine. Then you need to use Parallels, and in Parallels still there will be no MST, no daisy chaining. My second use case is when I do office work on the go or in my second home in Stockholm. And here I have to say that it is an easy win for the MacBook Pro. And the reason for that is simply because of its way superior battery life. It is just so, so nice to be able to do some powerful tasks and still completely trust the battery life. And I don't like the battery life at all of the Yoga Slim 7 Pro. It is roughly double or a bit more than double the battery life in the MacBook Pro compared to the Yoga Slim 7. So that's really something to keep in mind if you are comparing between these two devices. On top of the battery life, this also has a better trackpad and it's actually a trackpad that is good enough so that I don't need to use an external mouse. One of the times when I was using this on the go, I forgot my external mouse and I actually didn't suffer from that at all. I was completely fine with using the trackpad, which is really not something I would say about most of Windows laptops, even though I find the trackpad on the Yoga Slim 7 Pro to be a completely fine experience. It's just not that good as the MacBook Pro. And my third use case is for video editing, and that's what I do mainly for this channel. And I don't do anything very heavy. I usually have pretty long clips, but then I have one or two or maybe three long clips, then I cut them together into a full HD video. I don't use any advanced stuff in these videos. So this machine is actually a bit overpowered, but even so, I still find the MacBook Pro to be way, way superior when it comes to my video editing tasks. And the reason for that is that it's a super smooth experience, and also the render times are crazy fast. So you can render something, double check it, and then you don't have to care if you have to re-render it because it's gonna be so fast, which is something that I really appreciate a lot. On top of that, the fact that it doesn't draw that much battery, even though you're using it for something heavy like video editing, I feel is a big plus for me that is usually doing quite a lot of traveling and love to edit videos when I'm on the go. I'll be able to shoot a video when I'm at home and then bring along the footage and then edit it on the go and publish it to YouTube when I want to do that. The only thing that disturbs me a little bit is that they added in a SD card reader into the MacBook Pro, but they didn't make it very fast. So every time I've used the SD card reader for video transfers, I've been pretty annoyed with the slow transfer speeds of it, and my Lenovo laptops get way better transfer speed compared to the MacBook Pro. However, this Lenovo laptop doesn't come with an SD card reader. So of course, the MacBook Pro also wins there in terms of the connectivity when it comes to your cameras. And then my last use case is a tiny bit of gaming. And in this regards, I would say that the Yoga Slim 7 Pro easily wins because Windows is by far the better operating system when it comes to gaming. Most of the games I play are not even available in Mac OS. And running Parallels, which I also tried out, didn't work that well for me. I wasn't able to install even Battle.net to try my different Blizzard games, so I wouldn't recommend the experience on the MacBook Pro, but maybe this was something due to me not being used to using Parallels. But the experience of gaming on the Yoga Slim 7 Pro is actually fairly good. The XE graphics are pretty good at handling not too heavy games, and I can even play Overwatch at an FPS around 100 to make use of that 90Hz screen that it has. On top of that, it also has a Thunderbolt port that you can connect to an eGPU to be able to run games at a much higher frame rate. So that is another plus of running a Windows-based laptop together with Thunderbolt. 
this guy has Thunderbolt. But since its gaming capabilities are limited, I don't really see the reasons why I would connect it to an eGPU. Let's get into the close-up comparison of the two laptops and then some conclusions in what I think about which one is the best. Let's have a closer look at the outsides of the laptops and let's start off with the thickness of the laptops because they differ quite a bit here. As you can see the MacBook Pro is a very flat shell and the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7 Pro has a thicker part in the back here and then a thinner part up in the front. Although the difference is not that big between the two sides. But what you can see here is that when you are taking your finger and moving it, then it is stopping when you come over to the Yoga Slim 7. So even this is called Yoga Slim 7, this is still actually a little bit thicker at the lower part of the laptop when it is folded together like this. In this case, of course, you have to ignore that I have my magnets on the Yoga Slim 7 Pro. These are used for attaching an external monitor and they are permanently placed there. So I don't want to remove them because then I will have to put new ones on there. Moving on to the front of the laptops, you can see what I was just talking about, that the Yoga Slim 7 Pro is a little bit more slim in the front here. However, the MacBook Pro is very, very similar in size in the front compared to in the back. These laptops are both 14 inch devices with 16 by 10 aspect ratio, which means that they have very similar dimensions looking at them from the outside like this. One thing that is a little bit different though is that the corners of the MacBook Pro are a bit more rounded. This especially goes in the back corner. So if you see right there, we have a much more square angle on the Yoga Slim 7 Pro compared to the MacBook Pro. This is very much a matter of taste, but I sometimes feel like the rounded corners give a bit of a more smooth look to the laptop, as well as a bit smoother when you are putting it into a bag or something like this. Taking a closer look at the bottom, we see that we have some differences here. The Yoga Slim 7 Pro has some main ventilation grills right here in the bottom plate. When the MacBook Pro has the main ventilation grills here on the sides. And then of course they both blow out some air here around the hinge area. The MacBook Pro has some pretty large rubber feet to lift it up from the table. And the Yoga Slim 7 Pro has a different shape of rubber feet. And then this taller rubber foot back here that is covering the whole part of the laptop. We can also see here that the Yoga Slim 7 Pro has bottom firing speakers when there are no speakers on the MacBook Pro. So the speakers there are to be seen when we open laptops up. Let's have a look if the laptops can be opened with one hand. This was the Yoga Slim 7 Pro and as you can see it recognized my face right away and then logged me straight into Windows. That was the MacBook Pro and as you can see it does not recognize my face because there is no facial recognition in the MacBook Pro. I will have to touch the fingerprint reader which is super fast and then it logs me right into macOS. Let's have a closer look at the port selection of the two laptops. As you can see here, the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7 on the left hand side has two USB-C ports that are full Thunderbolt 4 ports. The MacBook Pro has its MagSafe connector, which I'm very happy to see back. Although I completely switched to USB-C chargers by now, it's still nice to have a MagSafe adapter for when you are at home, especially if you have some people over and there is some kind of risk for someone tripping on the cable. However, again, it is unlikely that you actually need a charger because the battery life of the machine is so, so good, which is something that hasn't really been the case in older machines, but now the battery life is amazing, so I don't charge it that often. Then you have two fully fledged USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports on the MacBook Pro as well, together with a 3.5mm headphone microphone combo jack. Flipping over to the right hand side, on the Yoga Slim 7 Pro we have a headphone microphone combo jack together with a USB-A port. On the MacBook Pro, as you can see, there is a full-size SD card reader where the SD card protrudes quite a lot when it's put into the reader. This is not the fastest SD card reader, but it's still very nice to see that it is there. 
Then we have another fully fledged USB-C Thunderbolt 4 port. And then there is a full size HDMI connector. I like the port selection on both of these laptops. I especially like that there is both USB-C and USB-A on the Yoga Slim 7 Pro. And the fact that there is both the SD card reader and the full size HDMI in combo with the USB-C ports on the MacBook Pro. However, when putting all of this together, I would say that the win in terms of ports go to the MacBook Pro because of its wider port selection, even if it doesn't have the USB-A port. The Yoga Slim 7 Pro weighs in at 1,397 grams, and that is without my added magnets that you can see right there. With the included power adapter and cable, it weighs in at 1,717 grams. The MacBook Pro weighs in at 1,597 grams. Together with its included charger and braided MagSafe cable, it weighs in at 1,873 grams. This is a typing test of the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7 Pro. This is a typing test of the MacBook Pro. When it comes to the keyboard experience, this is a very easy win for the Lenovo laptop in my experience. The main reason for that is that the travel distance on the Lenovo is so much better than the travel distance on the keys in the MacBook Pro. That difference in travel distance really makes for a nicer typing experience in all my different use cases. I feel more of a need to use an external keyboard when I use the MacBook Pro compared to when I use the Lenovo keyboard. I love the layouts of both of the keyboards and I think they are both relatively responsive. But the travel distance is really what makes the difference here and that gives Lenovo the win in the keyboard department. There's not a lot of keyboard flex in any of the devices, so this is something that is really good to see, that these have pretty good quality feel and they don't give way when you are typing, even if you are a strong typer. Placing them side by side like this, we can also have a better look at the trackpads. And as you can see, the trackpads are very similar in size, which is something that hasn't really been the case before, where Mac computers have had way larger trackpads compared to the Windows equivalents. The trackpad on the Yoga Slim 7 Pro is good, although it does have a little bit of a rattling noise when you're tapping it down here in the bottom. That is something that really adds to less of a quality feel of the machine as a whole, and something that makes me give an easy, easy win to the trackpad in the MacBook Pro. There is no rattling noise, this has a perfect quality feel to it, it is smooth and gestures work absolutely perfect. I love the experience of using the trackpad of the MacBook Pro, and it is really the best trackpad I have used in any laptop that I have been testing on this channel. There is a fingerprint reader in the MacBook Pro, and it is an incredibly fast fingerprint reader. In the Yoga Slim 7 Pro, there is no fingerprint reader, but it has the Windows Hello with the infrared camera in the front. As you can see on the screens right now, the cameras are very different. The quality of the camera in the MacBook Pro is way better than the camera quality in the Yoga Slim 7 Pro. And as you can see on the right screen there, the amount of light that the camera is able to take in is just so much better in the MacBook Pro. So this camera is something that pretty much works in any kind of brightness level and it still gives off a pretty decent image. This is something that I appreciate a lot in my work where I have a lot of video meetings. If you want to see the cameras more in depth, you can have a look at my different reviews of these laptops that will be linked in the description below. Both these laptops have been working perfectly fine when it comes to Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connectivity. And I have to say, all in all, these are two units that work very well with most of the things. 
That's something I really value with both of these laptops, that they are just well working devices and there's not a lot of issues with them. When it comes to the speakers, this is a pretty interesting area. The Yoga Slim 7 Pro has really good speakers, although they are bottom firing. So when you put them on a table, they really produce good and loud sound. But when you put them on some other surface where the sound can't really get through in the same way, they get a bit muffled. The audio from the speakers in the MacBook Pro is absolutely amazing. It is front facing speakers and there are multiple speakers up there in the grills. While I was shooting this video, I forgot to do the speaker test. So I have to refer you with timestamps in the description below to where you can find the speaker tests of both of the machines. But I can tell you that this is an easy win for the MacBook Pro. The Yoga Slim 7 is not bad by any means, but the MacBook Pro is the best speaker setup I have ever heard in a laptop. In terms of upgradability, there is really nothing you can upgrade on the MacBook Pro. It does have the SD card slot, but the SD card protrudes a lot when you put the SD card in it. So you're going to need a special SD card to be able to get some extra storage with that slot. You can upgrade the SSD in the Yoga Slim 7 Pro, but there is no upgrade for RAM. And also you can't put an extra SSD in there, which is something that is possible on the regular Yoga Slim 7. So I really wish that both of these machines would be more upgradable to live up to their pro naming. I feel like that's really something that is of value to a pro user. So it's really sad to see them skimping down on something as important as upgradability. Let's talk about battery life, because I know this is something that is very important to a lot of laptop buyers. And the battery life is a super easy win in this case for the MacBook Pro. The battery life on the MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro CPU is simply amazing. And it is as good battery life, even if you're doing heavy tasks on it, it really can pull off a heavy load and still give off a really good battery life. Also, one thing that helps is that since it is incredibly fast and power efficient, for example, if you render a video and that just takes five minutes, compare that to a laptop that would render that video in 25 minutes, how much more it would be able to drive at this high power state before slowing itself down again. It is really a big, big win here for the MacBook Pro. The battery life in the Yoga Slim 7 Pro is really not that good. Right now when I have it in this idle state and I have about half of the brightness on, it is 33% battery and it claims to have 4 hours and 30 minutes left of use time. However, that's really not the case in any, any time that I've used this laptop. I would see it get around 4, 5, sometimes up to 6 hours. While on the MacBook Pro, I would see it get 8, 9 and sometimes up to 10 hours of battery life, depending on what I'm using it for. The overall OS experience is really good in both of these devices. I've been using Windows 10 only on the Yoga Slim 7 Pro. And I mean to upgrade this to Windows 11 down the road to be able to compare the experience and make some videos about how I view Windows 11 on the Yoga Slim 7 Pro. The macOS experience has also been really good. I haven't been on macOS for a very long time, but I felt like the transition back to macOS was pretty smooth. And the only thing that really disturbed me was when I used my external keyboard that was only optimized for Windows. And I was switching that over to a keyboard that was optimized for both Windows and Mac experience. I have been enjoying all the things I've done with both of these laptops, both when it comes to work, both on the internal screens and external monitors. Consuming media is great and gaming on the Yoga Slim 7 Pro is also a great experience. But let's talk a bit more about performance. When it comes to performance, this is something that will differ a lot between these different devices, depending on what specification you get. I have the M1 Pro in the MacBook Pro, and I have the i5 1135G7 in the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7. When it comes to performance, this is really a matter of what specification you get of these laptops. I have the i5 1135G7 in the Yoga Slim 7i Pro. And I have the base model of the M1 Pro CPU in the MacBook Pro. The i5 1135G7 is 
The M1 Pro is a much, much faster CPU compared to the 1135G7. And you can get the Yoga Slim 7 Pro with a very powerful Ryzen 7 or even a Ryzen 9 CPU. However, these both work super well for most of the tasks. And it's really only when you move up to some very heavy tasks like video editing or rendering something that the M1 Pro really shines. One thing that I do find interesting though is that these machines both are able to run very silently. And the M1 Pro has a much powerful CPU and it's still able to run completely silent. The Yoga Slim 7 Pro has an Intel i5 CPU and it's able to run very silent, which is actually not the case with all Windows laptops, even if they have 1135G7. So I think they are doing a really good job here and I love the fact that they are able to stay completely without fan noise for almost all the things you're using them for. The idle temperature of the Yoga Slim 7 Pro up here in the hottest area is around 25 degrees. The idle temperature on the MacBook Pro up here in the hottest area is around 30 degrees. Let's do a quick Cinebench R23 uh, benchmark that runs a 10 minute loop of maxing out the CPU, mainly to see how they react in terms of fan noise and in terms of their heat. I'm gonna move them a little bit side by side from each other so that they don't affect each other too much. We have run half of the Cinebench R23 test and both of the laptops are still completely silent. For the record, I'm using the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7 Pro with the intelligent cooling mode because if I would use it in the extreme performance mode, it will immediately max out the CPU, start running the fans, and I want to see how it can fare with a heavy task when it gets to control the fans in intelligent cooling mode. The hottest area on the Yoga Slim 7 Pro is now around 30 degrees. The hottest area on the MacBook Pro is now around 36, 37 degrees. So it is still the same case. The MacBook Pro runs a bit hotter compared to the Yoga Slim 7 Pro. We now have one minute left of the Cinebench R23 test and we currently have a little tiny bit of fan noise coming from the Yoga Slim 7 Pro. The MacBook Pro is still completely silent all the way through this test. The Yoga Slim 7 at the hottest point is around 32 degrees now and at the WASD keys it is around 28, 29 degrees. The MacBook Pro at the hottest point is now up to 39 degrees. At the WASD keys it is at 31 degrees. Quite obviously I don't find any of the laptops hot to the touch. With some other applications opened and some other tabs running, uh, the Cinebench R23 in the Yoga Slim 7i Pro with the i5 1135G7 scores 4670 points. In the Cinebench R23 on the MacBook Pro, also here with a few applications open and some browser windows etc, it scores at 7898 points. The highest score I have received on the Intel i5 here is 5216. And the highest score I have received on the M1 Pro is 9,402. I would say there's one main con for both of these machines. And the one con I can really see on the Yoga Slim 7 Pro is its battery life. It is the one thing that I've been the most disturbed with with this machine when I've used it for the past eight or nine months. The one thing that I get truly disturbed with with the MacBook Pro is for sure the one cable connectivity. The fact that I can't use it in my office with one cable setups is just really annoying at a daily basis. The big thing here though is that both of these laptops don't have that many cons. I really think they do everything they do in a really good way. So which one do I pick when I get the choice? I would say that when I have these laptops in front of me in the morning and get to choose which one of them to pick, it is very easy for me to say that the MacBook Pro wins most of the time. 
This is the comparison I've been making over the past month since I bought it. And I can truly say that it wins the laptop battle over the Yoga Slim 7 Pro. However, if you take price into consideration and you don't own any of these laptops and you want to buy one of them, I think that this is a very, very close call. And I even have a hard time deciding which one would be the better choice. As I talked about in the beginning of the video, they have a lot of similarities, but they also have some pretty solid differences, mainly when it comes to the performance and the battery life of this guy right here. And the combination of that makes it such a good use experience for most of my use cases. However, the Yoga Slim 7 Pro is also an amazing machine. I've been super happy with the time that I have spent with it. If you can accept a little bit worse battery life and you can get your hands on one of the more powerful versions with the AMD Ryzen 7 or Ryzen 9 chips, then you can have a very, very nice Ultrabook Windows experience. And I think that Yoga Slim 7 Pro is the best Windows laptop you can buy right now, at least of all the ones that I have tried on the market. Which one would you pick and why? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you have any more questions about these devices, I would love to answer them down there. Have a real nice day and then I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.